Welcome to Open Music Sessions at Denver Open Media. I'm Shannon Altner, and I will be your host this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in, whether that is you are on Channel 57 on Comcast or watching on HD on 881. I know I'm looking real fresh tonight on HD. We're actually 4K too, baby. Yeah, we stepped it up here at Denver Open Media, so I hope you do too at home. Um, and thank you for all my beautiful audience members. Yes, give yourselves a round of applause. You are out on this beautiful evening in Denver tonight supporting local talent, local art, local music, local food here on the Santa Fe Arts District. If you are at home or in your car and you're thinking of going out tonight and you don't know what to do, I definitely suggest coming down to the Santa Fe Arts District and coming to visit us, of course, too, at 700 Calamath. We have so much going on tonight. We have an amazing show for you all. We have Colfax Speed Queen bringing us some tunes later on this evening. Let's give a round of applause for them. And not one, but two comedians in the house tonight. We've got Allison Rose as well as Jeff Tice. Let's give it up for them. Thank you very much. And we have our community spotlight, the Community Resource Center. So we will be talking with them about what they do for the community and how you can get involved as well in just a little bit. But I do want to just bring up if you know who we are. We're Denver Open Media. We're your public access station here in Denver. We are the best kept secret, which I, I you know, that's not a very good tagline. You know, you wanna be like the most well-known thing in Denver, right? So if you are interested in creating media, you wanna be part of the conversation, whether that's you wanna host a radio show or create a documentary or a short film or just learn to edit, right? Everything is about video these days on social networking. We can help you do that. So how we do that is we provide affordable classes for you. So whether that's studio production, so you could like rent out the studio and you could be me. Like you could be me right now. It's pretty cool, yeah. Or you could be behind the camera like Bill right now. Hi, thanks Bill. Or you could take a field production class or you could learn how to edit. That all happens right here for you. We also provide affordable memberships for you to get your hands on this equipment. Um, so we are on 104.7 as well on the dial. So I just wanted to shout out to that too. So not only do we do video production, we do radio production as well. So come on down, visit us, whether that's tonight, we do tours every other Wednesday of the month, the first and third Wednesday. We'd love to have you out. And if you're here and you're not a member, you're in luck. Oh, yeah, it's your lucky night. Um, we are not only doing a raffle tonight for a basic membership and a free class, so write your information down right here in Studio A or up near the bar. We also have Max Joe's Coffee, which is right down the street. I go there. I get a chai tea. It's great. Um, they've given us a gift card tonight as well as Comedy Works. Two tickets to Comedy Works. Have you been there? Anyone? Comedy Works? Yeah. Yes, it is a fantastic spot. It is like nation renowned. They take your cell phones. It's fantastic because you should not have them, okay? Anyways, that's besides the point. You can win all that tonight. So please write down your information and it's all up to you. Do you want free stuff? Do you like free stuff? I do, thank you very much, but I shouldn't win because I'm hosting this show. So we will draw uh, three lucky winners at the end of the, the night tonight. Without further ado, we are going to move on to our community spotlight. We have Maria Fabula. Please make your way up to the stage. Let's give a round of applause for Maria. We can share. Hi, Maria. How's it going tonight? It's good, how are you? I'm fantastic, I'm so excited to be here with you. And you know, I have actually attended events from the Community Resource Center uh, and it, it's just a fantastic organization, so please let everyone know what you do there. Sure, great. Well, hello everyone, how are you doing tonight? Yeah. Woo! 
Um, at Community Resource Center, we are all about the nonprofit sector. So how many of you and all your viewers know what nonprofit, the nonprofit sector does? Yay, nonprofits. Yay. Woo! You're at one right now. Yes, you are. So the nonprofit sector, actually nonprofits are the heart and soul of our communities. They're food banks, they're their hospitals, their child care centers, and all of those uh, institutions need help doing their good work better. And so we at the Community Resource Center help them do that through education, through resources, and through training. Uh, we do that all year long throughout the whole entire state. We serve over 5,000 uh, individuals throughout the state uh, and organizations, and we really believe in the power of what the sector does, uh, and we support them by really helping build up their capacity. So you're a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits. That's some powerful stuff. <laughs> well, because we need the help, we do. I feel like, you know, we're always scrapped for resources and we're just doing the best we can to help the community. So it is nice to have a space where you get to help us too. <laughs> um, I know you have an event coming up. Yes, what is that all about? Yes, so uh, nonprofits need funding to do all their great work. That's true. You need funding, right? We need funding. And so there are lots of opportunities for uh, nonprofits to actually bring revenue into their organization. So it's not just about grants. It's not just about individual donations. Um, our event uh, is being held at our training center down in uh, at the Colorado Collaborative for Nonprofits uh, at 789 Sherman, which is just a little little ways from here. Um, we're going to be talking about PRIs, so Program Related Investments, which is a new tool that foundations use to fund nonprofits. So everybody needs to know about this. Yeah, and when is that taking place? And is it individuals and organizations that can attend? Yep, it's open to anyone who'd like to attend. It's taking place on March 14th. It's a full day session from nine to four. We definitely encourage folks to come out uh, to learn about how they can really uh, position themselves in a, in a way that's competitive for a program related investment for their nonprofit. And where can people sign up for that event and also just to get involved and you know be on board with what you do and kind of be in the pulse of, of what you all are up to at Community Resource Center? That is a fantastic question. So you can visit our website at crcamerica.org. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us this evening, Maria. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you did the America Divided series, is that correct? We did, right here in the studio. Awesome. It was such powerful stuff to get everyone in here um, and, and really discussing what this content means and distilling it down. So thank you for providing that programming for nonprofits as well as everything else you do. I, I yeah, love what you all do over there. Thank you so much. Let's give a round of applause for Maria. Awesome. <laughs> So without further ado, we are going to hop over to a PSA. There's my camera. There you are. Hey. Um, we have a fundraiser coming up for Denver Open Media. So take it away. just played disco. I loved it so much. And like two other people loved it as well. It was great. You, I'm talking to you right there. Thank you, because I'm a disco queen. But not everyone is, you know, especially in Denver. You kind of like loosen people up to get down. OK, so I hope you had enough crazy mountain beer and all the good goodies upstairs, meaning carbs. We just fed you carbs, a lot of, lot of carbs, yep. Because Allison Rose is about to take to the stage. Let's give it up for Allison. Hey, hello everybody. How are you guys doing? Doing good? Yeah, hell yeah. Nice, extra good back there. Um, I am also doing excellent. Thank you for asking. Um, I've actually been like probably the happiest I've ever been in my entire life lately. I know that's kind of rude right now, uh, <laughs> given the state of everything, you know. Uh, sometimes when I say that I'm like the happiest I've ever been, there's like a faint smattering of woos in the audience, uh, <laughs> which is nice, you know. Uh, it's too late. You missed it. I don't know. You missed it now. 
Uh, but it's nice when people do that because it makes me feel like we've got our priorities kind of straightened out, you know? Because uh, <laughs> we cheer on command for like babies and marriage, but if somebody says they're happy, screw you, lady, <laughs> you know? Uh, get back out there, do something for the economy, you know? Um, which is kind of fair, you know? We're supposed to pursue happiness, not achieve it, so uh, <laughs> that's on me. Uh, happiness is unpatriotic, <laughs> but I'm doing it anyway, you know? It's my form of protest right now, I think. Uh, I was starting to feel like you could tell how long I'd been happy by how long my hair was getting, you know? Uh, which, not really a joke, but sometimes people laugh at it, and I didn't really... <laughs> Uh, didn't really understand why until I saw a bald man just die laughing at it. <laughs> he was just like, oh, Harry's happiness. I miss my kids, you know? Um, but no, I've done that thing like that we get to do as women sometimes when we're real sad where we cut our hair to have control over something, right? Uh, we're just like, well, something's got to change and it's not going to be my life. So <laughs> this seems like the easiest, you know? Uh, and my hair was extra long, like so long, like it felt like one of those signs up in a factory that says 256 days without accident, you know? Uh, and I was tired of having a humble brag on my head that said to other women, like, yeah, I have split ends, but I'm healthy on the inside, <laughs> you know? Because uh, that's garbage. Um, if anybody ever says it's what's on the inside that counts, they're about to walk into a Ross. It's just... <laughs> No. <laughs> Only time it's true. <laughs> uh, so I cut it, you know, didn't cut it because I was sad. Cut it because this was the first time in three years I felt like I had enough money for a haircut. So baller up here, doing well, you know. Uh, turns out only enough money for half a haircut. So uh, going back in a few years to even it out. I had a lady the other day say she liked my dress concoction. Like I just whipped it up in a cauldron that morning or something. Um, also, like I hadn't put any thought into my outfit. You know, like I kind of wasn't saying something about who I was with what I was wearing. And at the time, I was wearing like a seven-year-old Japanese maternity dress. So I was saying quite a bit. <laughs> Less of a dress concoction, more of a dress confession. Uh, my confession is that I am economically savvy. Kept that maternity dress for seven years. Also, when I was 19, I kept the clothes, but gave up the baby. So, uh, pretty good with money. Pretty, pretty good. Sometimes people are sad at that. Like, I feel like some of you were, and I'm like, I don't, I don't understand that's happy. You know, like, did you want, did you want a dead baby joke? <laughs> baby lived in that one, okay. Uh, I am from Kansas originally. No joke there. Just wanted to say that so you guys could be like, oh, that last joke makes sense now. <laughs> I understand how that happened to you. Uh, no, clearly I, can ha I have jokes about Kansas. It's pretty easy to make fun of it. Um, but it's not actually, it's not that bad, you know? Like, I miss some things about it. I miss the stars and the open sky, you know? Uh, which is how you tell a state is extra terrible. <laughs> just like, you know what I miss most about this land? Uh, all the stuff that filled in where it just completely lacked, where there was nothing. Um, that's like if you just got out of a terrible marriage and you're like, oh, it wasn't all that bad, you know? Uh, I really miss the times when my husband was out of town. <laughs> those, were, those were the days, you know? I, I wasn't raised on television growing up, which feels like I shouldn't be saying that right now. <laughs> um, but I wasn't raised on TV and not watching cartoons as a child. Same thing as not watching the news as an adult. There's um, no idea what was going on in the world, you know? Uh, like another kid came up to me on the playground once and just asked, so which, which Ninja Turtle would you be? And I was just like, uh, I don't really, I don't really think I have enough information to have an informed opinion on this issue. <laughs> Maybe I could read up, get back to you, you know? Uh, 
I should have just faked it, right? Like, adults fake it all the time. Like, half of America probably thinks the Gaza Strip is a dance, and they're doing great. <laughs> they're doing, doing wonderful. So I wasn't cool as a kid. I'm trying to be cooler now as an adult. Started filling in my eyebrows. Yep, pretty good first step, right? <laughs> I'm doing it. Uh, I am filling them in with a number two pencil, though. Uh, this part of me still thinks the Scantron controls my destiny. Can't quite, can't shake it. I'm a pretty, pretty big fan of drugs. Um, just trying to be cool, you know, just kidding, mom and dad. Okay, great, perfect. Um, I might like drugs a little bit too much, though, because I recently started a campaign that says that drugs are good for kids. Oh. <laughs> you know it's true, you know? Because, like, in the future, drugs are going to be the only thing that can get kids off their phones, you know? Like, give your kids acid, they won't be able to look at their hands, let alone what's in them. <laughs> Screw ADHD medicine. You want your kids to focus? Give them mushrooms. Uh, they're going to stare at anything for hours. You know? Also, they're going to play outside, so bonus. I like that joke because I can tell which of those drugs the crowd likes better. <laughs> I also like, uh, like alcohol and weed and things like that. I got uh, pretty drunk last night. Ended up kissing a girl. Yeah, there are the woos. No woos for happiness, but girl kissing every time. Uh, no, that's fair. Those are pretty much happiness, girl kissing, same things, I think. Um, but yeah, I just have to say, like, as a mostly straight woman who's kissed several other mostly straight women, I feel like that Katy Perry song might be a little bit more relatable if they change the lyrics, you know, just a teensy bit. <laughs> like maybe uh, I kissed a girl, and I barely remember it, but I think maybe both of us were crying. Uh, <laughs> just so inspired by each other, you know? <laughs> I'm one of those people that's trying to, to lose weight in the new year, if we can still say it's the new year, I don't know. Um, I got a hot tip, just like everybody does for you guys. It's real easy, mine works, hands down. Just, uh, just put one foot on the scale, you know? <laughs> Cause then you can weigh whatever you want, just. Uh, <laughs> Back and forth, really work it, you know. Uh, that's your workout for the day, just on and off the scale. <laughs> it does kind of make me feel like half of me is kind of dying faster, <laughs> though. Like, you know, it's kind of like a real oh, one foot on the scale, one foot in the grave situation. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I, um, I've got some running songs right now. My goal right now is just to run through one song. Um, <laughs> Right now, I'm more of a jingle jogger. <laughs> just uh, Spotify ads working pretty well for me. Um, it's just kind of harder to be healthier, right? Like, you get drunk with friends and, and forget that you're trying to be a better person. And it's just so easy to make excuses. Like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow, you know? And I kind of realize, like, I feel like me trying to lose weight is kind of like, I'm like a dude before 2017, you know? <laughs> Because like I could easily probably be a better person, but no one's making me, so it's just so hard. Okay, <laughs> too, too real there. Uh, <laughs> actually, I think I feel like being overweight makes me feel like a dude because I've got like that like chin fat underneath that I can stroke like a beard. It's pretty good. Too real, I think, for some people here. Too real. I um. I feel like we're using the phrase ghosting wrong. Because ghosting is when somebody dumps you and then never contacts you again. And that's not what ghosts do. Um, <laughs> ghosting should be when somebody dumps you and still won't leave you alone, you know? Uh, like they just keep like messing with your Netflix password. <laughs> Like, send over a friend to hold your hand, look you in the eyes, and say, he just wants you to know that he still loves you, and he's watching you. <laughs> uh, from above, your bed. There's a camera, you know? Uh, ghosting should be scary. That's all I'm saying. You guys shower? Nice. Good for you. Tight quarters in here. Nobody ever asks, so I'm just making sure, you know? 
taking a quick poll. Uh, please keep showering. Me personally, not a big fan of showers. Uh, kind of prefer baths, you know, because you know what happens to you classically in a shower? That old psycho scene? You get killed, right? You know what happens to you in a bath? You kill yourself. Um, okay. Not advocating, I'm just saying I'm pro-choice. <laughs> you know, uh, should be up to you. All right, you guys, I think that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much. You've been wonderful. Allison Rose, everyone. So where are you doing some stand-up next? Where can we catch you? Um, I'm actually, I'm hosting a show this, tomorrow, Saturday, at a Rebel restaurant. It's called Rebel Yell, it's like 10 p.m. So that should be, that should be fun. Got a lot of out-of-town comics coming through. Nice. Wonderful. Yeah, I haven't heard of that spot, so I'll have to check it out. And are you online? I'm sure you're online. How could you not be online? How can we keep an eye on you and get in touch with you? Um, right now, I'm mostly on social media. I've got uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Do we have a lower third? Is that happening right now? I think it has the Instagram. It's got that Instagram tip. All right, you all see it. You all see it at home. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Allison Rose, for being here. Let's give a round of applause one more time. And without further ado, Mr. Jeff Tice, please make your way to the stage. Ah, uh, thank you so much. One more time for Allison, let her hear it. Give it up for Shannon as well. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, give it up for yourselves, for coming out, enjoying your life. This is awesome. Thank you, Denver Media, for having us. We're gonna have a good time tonight. Uh, it's already been amazing. My name is Jeff. It's Jeff with a G. So it's just straight up Jeff the wrong way. Yeah, G off. My parents were like, hey, let's give him a super regular name, but let's also make him have to explain it a lot to people. It's like, cool, thanks, parents. My middle name is Carlton. Yeah, what? Yeah, it didn't click for me until I went to the DMV and the lady behind the counter goes, oh, Jeffrey with a G and Carlton. Looks like someone's parents were fans of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And I was like, ha ha, what? I was like, lady, I've never realized that before. And she leaned over the desk and she's like, you're a real big idiot, aren't you? And I was like, that's so aggressive for the DMV lady. I was like, take it easy. It's like, all right. I was like, that's crazy, lady. I've never realized that before. She goes, that is weird, man, because it says it right here in your ID card. It says your name is Jazzy Jeffrey Carlton Will Smith Uncle Phil Tice. <laughs> your name's the whole cast and crew, man. You're an idiot. <laughs> All right, take it easy, lady. It's very rude. I, uh, I got coffee before the show. I walked in, and there was a coffee show. <laughs> Someone wooing for coffee. Give it up for coffee real quick. <laughs> yeah, everyone. <laughs> That's the best ever, uh, sweet. I got coffee and I walked into the coffee shop and there was a sign uh, at the coffee shop that said, soup of the day, Mexican fiesta soup. And I got excited because I'm hoping that somewhere in Mexico right now, there's a sign at a coffee shop that says soup of the day, American party soup. <laughs> what does that soup look like right now? It's just like a hot dog floating in warm broth. Just, ah. <laughs> just like a red Solo cup filled with mayonnaise. Just, ah. It's just a gun. All right, we'll just. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. Stop it. Stop it right now. That's good. Uh, my wife and I, some good news. My wife and I, we just bought our first home together here in Denver, which is exciting. Uh, yeah, that's an expensive woo. Thank you. What are we doing? We are idiots. It's so ridiculous. We saved up for so long and we bought like a nice quaint like two door Ford Fiesta. Yeah, Denver's out of, we waited for like the worst possible time in the history of Colorado to try to buy a house. It's such a nightmare. We looked at over 30 homes and we put in eight offers. And the first offer that we put in below asking price of the house, first offer below asking price, we just got a text message back from the real estate agent that was like, ha, LOL, 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 nah, dude, and then just four pages of the middle finger emoji. I was like, all right, man, that's weirdly unprofessional for a real estate agent, but okay, I guess, I appreciate it. I'm excited, we live out in the suburbs, which is fine. It's the same kind of neighborhood I grew up in, uh, but we've got just like a bunch of like garbage kids causing problems in our neighborhood at night. 
Yeah, just like trash kids, which is cool. I, yeah, trash kids, man, you guys, the troublemakers. I was one of those kids growing up. That's totally fine. I'm just excited to be able to give back to like the garbage kid community in my neighborhood. So what I've started to do to help them out and make them progress in life is I've started to fill up my mailbox all the way to the top, like to the brim with loose glitter. <laughs> yeah, in the hopes that some kid drunk two in the morning drives by with his buddies with a baseball bat and he's like, oh yeah, boom, oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna change that kid's life forever. That kid got drunk with his friends, went out and vandalized some stuff, and found God all in one evening. <laughs> Changing his life. He's going to make it. He's going to college. He's going to do it. He won't. He's a piece of garbage. Come on. He's hitting mailboxes with baseball bats. It's not good. I, uh, we've got, like, an old Vietnam War vet. He has, like, the hat. Uh, he walks by our house every day. Uh, and he lets his dog poop in our yard every day, which I felt like is a little aggressive. And so what I've started to do to help that is I've taken the nativity scene from Christmas and I dress that up like the Viet Cong. That's correct. That's the correct response to that. Yeah, you guys are right. But I found out, guess, like, guess how many times a day now that dog poops on my yard? Twice a day, still. He doubled down hard on that. I made him real angry. Apparently, he wasn't even in Vietnam. He just bought the hat at a thrift store. He was a firefighter for 30 years. He thought it was just some weird performance art protest going on. Made him real mad. He brought the dog around a couple more times. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, guys, support the troops. Give it up for the troops real quick. <laughs> yeah. Coffee and the troops. That's what my set's about tonight. Give it up for coffee and the troops. It's good. I... Uh, you guys are fun. You guys having a good time? Feeling good? How's everyone doing at home? Thank you for being on your couch and watching on the internet. It's very fun. It's a good time. Uh, I'm married. I've been married for a long time, like super married. I've been married for a long time. My wife and I, we dated for eight years before I finally asked her to marry me, which, yeah, I found out is way too long. That's so long. No one cares about your life or relationship at that point. It's way too long. When I finally asked... Half the reaction was all my wife's friends, just like, yeah, finally, you idiot, you moron. And then the other half was all my buddies just being like, we thought you were married already, man. <laughs> we had no idea. You stopped hanging out with us like five years ago, bro. <laughs> just like, cool, good friends. When I finally asked my wife to marry me, we went to this uh, nice restaurant in California where we lived at the time. And it was a beautiful moment. The moon was glistening over the water. Uh, it's just an amazing moment. I walk out onto the sand. I look at my wife, and she looks out over the water, and she takes a deep breath, and she goes, I wonder how many dead bodies are in that water right now. I was like, what? I was like, that's where your head's at right now? It's like, my head's at, like, happily ever after, greatest moment of our lives, and she's like, I wonder what the body count of the ocean is. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, I don't care. We've come too far. I'm powering through. I'm going to ask her. <laughs> Nothing's going to stop me. And she goes, nah, seriously. Like, what if a hand just washed up on the shore right now? I was like, I don't care. I'm powering through. I'm going to ask her. Nothing's going to stop me. I was like, did you say a hand with a ring on it? <laughs> ah, it's a fairy tale. Happily ever after. It's a Disney movie, basically. Same thing. Same thing. Um, I went to work today. How, how many people? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> work. It's awful. Um, one, for like 100% of everyone in this room and watching on all the amazing avenues of Denver Open Media, give it up for them one more time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, pandering. Everyone, uh, the weirdest person you know in your life for every single person is always, 100% of the time, a coworker. It's always someone you work with. And if you feel like that's not true for you, you're that person for sure. <laughs> Everybody hates you at your job if you don't feel that way. <laughs> and I, my job is so boring, I'm trying to like become the weirdest person in the office <laughs> just to entertain myself. So what I've started to do is, I've started just to do little things just to make people question if I am right for the job. 
So I'll just like go to lunch, get like a Subway sandwich, and then just sit at my desk, and then like eat it with like two forks, just <laughs> like I'm some sort of like Jared Scissorhands, just, just a nightmare. People hate it. They just like zero eye contact. No one wants to talk to me. It's terrible. And then I'll talk to people, like if I do have a conversation just in passing with people at work, I'll just insert super, super personal information, but kind of not make sense. So I'll just be like, yeah, my wife and I, we don't have kids yet, mostly because we're super into podcasts. <laughs> and they're like, what did you say? And I'm like, yeah, NPR stands for Not Parents Radio, man. <laughs> they're like, I'm late for a meeting. I got to go right now. And they leave, and it's perfect. They question your sanity the rest of the day. My favorite thing to do at work, I did it today. On Friday afternoons, right before I leave, I send out a company-wide email to everyone. And I'll just start with some mundane stuff in the email, just basic, just logistical stuff. And then right in the middle of that email, I'll put heavy metal lyrics. <laughs> it's the best. I'll just be like, hey, everybody, happy Friday. We did great this week. You know, good work. Uh, attached is an invoice. Please take a look at the numbers. Make sure everything lines up. Also, there's hell in my eyes and death in my veins. <laughs> The end is closing in, <laughs> feeding on the souls of man, and from their minds within. Follow me into the fire. So come on, follow me into the fire. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. Uh, say hi to your kids. And send. Instantly, every time, two seconds after I hit send on that email, someone from HR just appears like a genie. They're like, oh, hey, Jeff. Hey, how's it going, man? What's up? I got your email. How are you doing? Um, numbers on the invoice look great. Everything's awesome. <laughs> also, are you okay? What is going on? Oh my God. Why are there two forks on your desk? What is happening? <laughs> you psycho. It's a nightmare. I, uh, oh, you guys are so fun. Um, <laughs> I, I like living here in America. Uh, <laughs> that's a good joke. Yeah, America. Everyone's like, this guy. Cute. I like, I mean, not recently, but on average, you guys get it. For, it's been fine. I found out in this country, if you work hard enough and you take advantage of the opportunities that come your way and you just happen to be like a 6'4 white dude, it is easy. Yeah, too close to home. I told that joke at Greenwood Village and they clapped like a little too hard. I was like, dial it way back. So, take it easy. I saw like Alexis being towed by Alexis to the show. Like, all right. Take it easy, Highlands Ranch. <laughs> the most American person I can think of, the most American dreamlike person, is a guy by the name of Robert Sacre. If you don't know who that is, he's just a terrible NBA player who plays for a terrible team. And I went to a game, and they put him up on the big screen to interview him. And the first thing I realized when they put him up there was, oh my, Robert Sacre couldn't be more high right now. Like, first day of college at CU, we're just going over the syllabus, like Cheetos on the face, obliterated. <laughs> and I got so excited, because he had to answer a bunch of questions in front of thousands of people. So the first question they ask him is, Robert Sacre, what's your favorite book? And he goes, my favorite book is The Jungle Book. <laughs> and then he goes, because it's a cartoon and I can watch it on TV. I was like, whoa, Robert Sacre just gave the most American answer you could give to that question. <laughs> the next question they ask him is, Robert Sacre, what's your favorite color? And he goes, I don't know, man, probably macaroon. <laughs> yeah, not the color of the team that he plays for or the color you may have thought he was trying to say, maroon. <laughs> he said macaroon, a delicious baked treat. And I was like, dude, how did you just out high and out American your last answer? It's like, hey, bro, what's your favorite color? You're like, food. <laughs> That's super American. My favorite color is a hot dog floating in warm broth. That's what it is. All right, thanks, everyone. I'm Jeff Tice. Thanks for coming out. Give it up for Shannon, your host. One more time for Allison Rose. Let her hear it. Jeff Tice, everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. I, you know, I feel like we would get along at work. I'm, 
Yeah, I'm just saying I like to spice it up as well. Not as much as you, though. I got to use that metal lyric uh, thing. <laughs> um, so where can we see you next? What you got going on? Um, Sunday night, I'll be at Comedy Works downtown. You can come check me out. I'll be there with uh, Stephen AJ, uh, a local comedian who'll be in town. He uh, just moved to L.A., coming back to Headline, so I'll be with him. Ooh, very exciting. Yeah, congratulations. That seems like a big gig. Uh, and where can we keep in touch with you online as well? Uh, you can check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Jeffrey Tice, G-E-O-F-F-R-E-Y, T-I-C-E. That's it. I'm trying to chip, I trip everyone up with that. You just tripped me up. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, let's give Jeffrey one more round of applause. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. So I just want to let you all know, show some love in the financial form as well. We have a small tip bucket going around the audience uh, for both our comedians. So please, 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 we really, really appreciate that. And we will be back with Colfax Speed Queen in just a little bit, but we've got a PSA on the way. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks so much, you guys. We have a party since the time it's magic. I tell you, your dancers look great out there dancing. Putting the power. Power. Putting the power of media. And technology. Into the hands. The hands. The hands of the people. The people. The people. Denver Open Media. That's Denver Open Media. We're good to go, because I'm talking. I'm doing it right now. Uh, we also have a Max Joe's gift certificate, as well as two tickets to Comedy Works. So you can write your information here in Studio A and up near the bar. But you know, you don't want to hear me. Get this girl off the stage, right? Let's play some music. Enjoy. What's up, everybody? We're Cold Facts Speed Queen. Thank you so much to Denver Open Media for having us. Such a vital part of the community. We love you so much. Thank you again for having us. Oh, hey, babe, you're too slow. I need some. For you. No, 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 no. Oh, I ain't no doctor, but I think you're like what I. 
cubic cores. I thought this was the future. Denver. Look at you, you're such a beautiful crowd. I, I, look at me, cheesing up here.
happy first Friday. Hope you guys got some free drinks and some food trucks.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much. We'll call Fast Speed Queen. We'll hope you have a lovely night. They shine so pretty and white. Her heart is black, darker than the night. Her teeth they shine so pretty and white. Her heart is black, darker than the night. Her teeth they shine so pretty and white. Her heart is black. Her teeth they shine so pretty and white. Her heart is black, darker than the night. Her teeth they shine so pretty and white. Her heart is black, darker than the night.
Denver Open Media, we're Colfax Speed Queen. We love you so much. We're gonna have the band play us off here. Gentlemen, if you would. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> Enjoy the rest of your night. We love you. Speed Queen, everyone, one more time. I've never seen them before, but just like feeling your energy, I need to go out to where they play because I feel like y'all were being real polite in our space, all right? So I can only imagine. So thank you guys so much for bringing your talents to our stage. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, so. Without further ado, I'm just gonna get to the raffle straight away. If I could get Jameson up here. Thank you so much, my dear. So I'm just gonna call out three lucky names really fast. We've got the Joe Max gift card. We have two tickets to Comedy Works as well as a basic membership to Denver Open Media. <laughs> Thank you for your support. Uh, Peter Karafitis, congratulations. I'm gonna give you the... Joe Max gift card. <laughs> I've been saying that wrong all night. I'm so sorry, Joe Max. I'm so sorry. So 
that whiskey. Oh, thank you. Oh, let's see. Casey Cacone. That seems Italian. Oh, he's coming to me. What do you want? Do you want the basic membership or the Comedy Works tickets? Comedy Works. I don't have it on me, so I'm just going to give you a high five. Congratulations, Jason. We'll contact you, man, all right? Oh, okay. What? what did I do? Casey, I'm just making that up in my own mind. Thank you. Casey, congratulations. And last but not least for our basic membership here. Damn, there's a lot of names. Y'all, thank you for coming out tonight. This has been an awesome show. Uh, we have Malcolm. You have a last name. You got a signature on you, honey. And a personality. I'm so glad you won tonight. You're stuck with me now. You have a basic membership and you got a free class for uh, Denver Open Media. What's up? Hi, hi, congratulations, high five, I don't have it on me, yay, we'll contact you. You got a basic membership, no, I need this so I can contact you, honey. Thank you. I hope the camera got our love, because it was real, it was for real. Thank you, Jameson, for being my man slave and holding that. That's just how I live my life. So, <laughs> we have some sponsors that we want to re thank really fast uh, for providing this evening and making it possible. Let's get those thrown up on the screen really fast for me, because I don't know them by heart. Westward, thank you so much sir, for supporting Open Music Sessions. Sexy Pizza as well. I had a lot of garlic knots, they were delicious. Sex Pot Comedy for bringing us not one, but two comics this evening, as well as Crazy Mountain Brewing Company. Always appreciate your support. You're right down the street. Everyone, please go visit at some point, as well as the Intrepid Sojourner. I think they just moved down the street. Sojourner, thank you. Sojourner. What would I do without you? Oh my gosh, hot mess. Comedy works as well. Thank you so much for the free tickets and Joe Max Coffee for that gift card. You're right down the street here in Santa Fe. Gotta support that local love as well as KGNU Community Radio who are co-working people right in here in our building. So thank you, thank you so much for your support for Open Music Sessions. Yes, round of applause. I know everyone left me here, but you 15 lovely people as well as the Mercury Cafe. So just a heads up, we have a fundraiser for Denver Open Media at Mercury Cafe on March 24th at 7 p.m. It is called the Frozen Flamingo Fundraiser. I don't know. I don't know why. It's just fun, right? It's just fun. Matt Struck, one of our best members here, will be hosting the show, and we'll just have a great time, get our community together to support this wonderful organization, bringing you this right here, right now. So until next time, we have a fabulous show for you coming up next first Friday, and I'll just see you then. Toodaloo.